Jewel Erickson gets hurt and Kirsten is dead inside. Score North's Judd Zolgad joins to break down the latest Minnesota Wild woes while also looking ahead at what's to come. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Grain Belt, Jim Beam, and Royal Credit Union. This is Season 4, Episode 171. Celebrate your favorite Minnesota sports teams and moments with SodaStick.com. Relive the Met Center chairs, the Metrodome push, and so much more with unique and quality garb found only at SodaStick. Don't forget to add code Bardown Beauties at checkout for 15% off all of your purchases. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? We're back. Bar Down Beauties, episode 171. I'm Jesse Pierce, writer extraordinaire for Wild.com, NHL.com. Uh, always joining Judd Zulgad. We'll get to him. He is our guest this week. He's going to stick with us for the full full episode, so we love that. Uh, over of Score North, also joining him. And then we have Kirsten Kroll, the Gophers' number one fan now. She's in Tampa cheering <laughs> on the Gophers. Look at what we've done, guys. We've accomplished it. We did it. The transformation and transition is complete. Kirsten, how's Tampa? Um, well, first, I'm reserving any comments until after I am back in my safety net. I don't even know if it'll be a safety net in Minnesota, <laughs> um, but I'm just reserving any comments until after the Frozen Four regarding the Gophers. Um, I took that picture with Goldie for you, Jesse. Proud of you. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. But no, Tampa's been great so far. This is my very first time down here, my first time at a Frozen Four and I've really, really been enjoying the experience. And just there truly is nothing like college hockey. And I knew that. But being at Amelie Arena yesterday, seeing just how stoked all of the fans are. And then even just the college hockey fandom. There's so many jerseys I've seen. Holy Cross, St. Cloud State, North Dakota, of course. Pretty much every single team in college hockey represented, even though their team is not here. So it's been incredible. I mean, number one, Gophers are there, Judd. Of Score North, he's joining us. Did you get to check out the Gopher game yesterday? Courtesy, I mean, the Twins gave all of us a day yeah. off to really just enjoy hockey. Uh, yes, I did. And and I became very concerned when the Gophers came out and looked for most of the first period as if they, they were on a power play and didn't take like a three-goal lead. And I'm like, oh boy, this feels very Minnesota sports-like, right? Like, you know, you outshoot them, you outplay them, and then in a one-game elimination, you lose two to one or something weird. But this team, I've been saying this, this team is so talented that that talent often prevails. And I really thought when all of those kids, Faber and Nyes and that group, uh, Lacombe, when they all came back, I said, this team needs to win a national championship. Mm -hmm. Like this is not a qualify for the Frozen Four and you feel great. This is a national championship. Like you, you look at the amount of kids who are going to get done playing Saturday night and join National Hockey League teams like not like Toronto can't wait. Yeah, Toronto's been Toronto's been rooting for the Gophers ouster for how long now <laughs> to get nice like he's the savior. So um, I was pleasantly surprised that they came back like they did. Quinnipiac is going to be uh, difficult on Saturday, but if they don't win, I will be disappointed. I mean, me too. It was so much fun to watch. I know my mom was like. They should stop scoring on the empty net. Now it just feels mean. I was like, no, this is hockey. Yeah. My International Falls mother is going soft. I, I'm concerned a little bit there. I mean, it was so much fun. Again, we're recording this on a Friday, so this will be long news, but I'm still amped about it. It was just a really defining win. And Judd, as, as you said, you have all these guys coming back. That's what's so tremendous. It is so reminiscent of those 2002 teams, those 2003 teams that were so close. And those guys were together for so long. That's the difference in this team. It's not, you know, just a lot of elite players. It's a lot of elite players playing for one another too, which is so important as you look down a championship game against, as we mentioned, Quinnipiac on Saturday. Yeah. And the thing is like a lot of them could have left and, and, didn't and then Cooley comes in and my God yes. is he good or what? Like that first line, I I am not joking. 
I have said this for a few months now. In my opinion, that first line is the best first line in this state, and that includes the team that plays in St. Paul. Now, Kaprizov <laughs> is special, but like if you look at what that first line does and how they buzz around, I mean, Snuggerud's fantastic. I, I watched yeah. his dad play, and his dad played, I think, for Buffalo, and his dad was a you know hardworking, good player. This kid is special. Like this kid is great. Cooley is great. Nice is phenomenal. So, yeah, th- I think you're right. I think the the point being made by those kids to come back was absolutely huge. And to Kirsten's point, Frozen Fours are so much fun. I, I went to the one that the Gophers got ousted in the was it the semifinal round by Boston College, I think, in like 2012 in Tampa. Uh, yes, yes, the, I have the, that Frozen Four shirt. The buzz around that that place is fantastic. Like, I think there's fans who who are like, why is a Frozen Four in Tampa? It's not a college hockey town. College hockey fans take over. And I'm going to tell you right now, the liquor sales in Tampa (laughs) for the past, for the next few days in the past few days are going through the roof. College hockey fans know how to have fun. They are doing it. Especially with all the North Dakota fans in attendance, I can attest. Good for business, though. Like, they're yeah. great for business. St. Paul loves them. Tom Reeds, are you kidding? They're the biggest North Dakota fans around. Kirsten, you were pretty high on Michigan, who got downed by Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac, a much better team than I think people are continuing to give them credit for, including you. What's your take on uh, the Bobcats and Gophers squaring off? And what did you see from them against the Wolverines and Adam Fantilli, your guy? Mm-hmm. Yes. So let me start here. Um, I came in, my flight came in late last night, so I was able to catch the last half of the Gopher game. One thing I will say, the couple of times I've seen the Gophers play in person, it truly amazes me how fast those guys are truly out skating everybody else. Their stick handling is fantastic. Just the hockey IQ on that team. I will give them credit there. Um, Just it, it's NHL caliber. It's like you're watching an NHL game, watching those guys on the ice. So I'll say that about the Gophers. Their offense is incredible. Now I watched and I sat and watched the whole Michigan Quinnipiac game. Um, I thought Michigan was going to play. I don't know if it was so much that Michigan didn't play how I thought they were going to. I think that was definitely part of it. Um, It seemed like they were slowed down a lot offensively, but I also think that speaks more to just how good Quinnipiac is defensively. Um, and another thing too, their goaltender, I apologize in advance if I'm saying his name wrong, but Yanov Peretz, Peretz, um, fantastic yeah, goaltender. Right to me. Yeah. Go really with it. Just, name. Yeah. Go with it. Complete <laughs> yes. confidence. They're all right um, through that name. Yes. So uh, Peretz just fantastic in net all night for Quinnipiac. He's a Hobie Baker top 10 finalist, Mike Richter finalist, and truly just huge force in net for the Bobcats. So I, I think Quinnipiac, I don't think Gophers fans should count them out. I think Gophers need to come ready and prepared because just watching how they were all over shutting down Michigan offensively yesterday, I was really impressed and truly the score should have been much higher than it was. There were so many times offensively Quinnipiac was right on the doorstep and Michigan's goaltender giving him credit too, just truly making remarkable saves. It was Mark andre Fleury-esque in the sense of just how dramatic some of those saves were. So those are some of my takeaways from yesterday's game. Well, you guys will be listening to this on a Monday once uh, Minnesota wins the national game. So it probably doesn't matter to any of you, but you know, Kirsten, can you, can we all just join me in one good M I N N E S O T A Minnesota, 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 I heard that enough in the third period of (laughs) yesterday's game. I'm good. (laughs) What's the raw about? They do it at that Mariucci. I don't for every game that I've ever gone to. So I started again background for all of you that didn't catch our past couple weeks of Gopher. I was a college hockey fan far and away way more than NHL for the longest time. And that's because I had a part of my life where there was no NHL team. So as I was getting into hockey, the Gophers were everything in town, right? So yep. I just, I loved college hockey. I started going to games when I was in high school and I was just like, this atmosphere is everything. Like it was so great. So I learned all the cheers and yeah, I don't, I don't know the backstory. I just know it's after every time you do that rouser, it's rah and everybody does it and I enjoy it. I'm just confused by it, but it's fine. <laughs> I'm just confused by it, but there's a lot in Jesse, life that confuses me. 
Yeah. Jesse, you also have St. Cloud people coming after you now in my mentions. Yeah, I see. Like, that. didn't she go to Iowa State? She doesn't even go there. So <laughs> that is just wow. the next era in I your know. hockey evolution. So congratulations. I mean, it's true. I went to I said we didn't have a division one program. I they're Big Ten, Big Twelve. I'm allowed what I'm allowed to like. It's not like they'll ever compete yeah. against the Gophers. That's my Gophers are my college hockey team. All right. Actually, Kirsten's got a really good point. No, she doesn't. Why did you go to Iowa State? You know what? Here's the literally. My wife went there. My niece yeah. went there. So like, I'm fine with it. But why would a hockey, a hockey girl like you are through and through? Why are you going to Ames, Iowa? You're going to love this story because it's a great question. I on it. So I didn't get into the U. That's why I was waitlisted forever and then just denied. Right. And I was like, well, that's crap. Whatever. Fine. I don't want to go here. Literally contemplated going to you guys will never believe it. North Dakota. I honest to God was like, maybe I go to North Dakota because I was a hockey person. Right. And I was going to be a hockey writer and this is what I wanted. And then I was like, I can't. And I'm like, you know what? If I can't go where there's a really good hockey pro, if I couldn't get into the U, I definitely wasn't getting into Madison. So that was also out of the question. And I was like, well, at least Iowa State has a great football program, basketball. Like I could cover all of these bigger sports, too, because at that time, again, go for football wasn't really anything go for basketball was kind of meh so I was able to go down and experience football and basketball at a different level and wrestling too that was actually kind of fun and then truth be told so they do have a college hockey program down there they compete in the ACHA which is where Penn State came from which is where Arizona State came from um, and they compete at a pretty high level so the nice thing is I walked in to Iowa State and became their head of broadcasting head of uh, media relations communications I did play-by-play had a team TV show basically ran that thing uh nice. and it was it was fun yeah so it gave me a lot of good experience there that was uh I'm no sorry. competition I'm, I'm sorry Jesse I kind of blacked out after you said you almost went to North Dakota I, I know my mouth a little bit <laughs> I know right <laughs> like I was like am I really considering this I can't I just can't believe I would ever think of that but I'm like but I love division one hockey and the Gophers have told me no and so that's just what we did oh somebody's there the small child, the smallest one. You know what? She's upset, as am I, about that craptastic first period <laughs> by by the National Hockey League in town last night. I don't blame her. She probably didn't sleep a wink. She probably no. didn't sleep a wink af- after that first period against Pittsburgh. Ugh. Judd, Judd's pulling a, a Jesse on the transition. I love it. Great segue there, Judd. We enjoy it. Uh, let's talk a little Minnesota Wild. First things first, I want to talk about Jewel Erickson getting hurt and Oscar Sundquist getting hurt, which I think yeah. both injuries worse than even the loss. You knew Pittsburgh was going to come out because they are incredibly desperate. They're still client trying to claw their way into the playoffs, into that wild card spot. Unfortunately for them, Florida and the Islanders both picked up wins last night as well. So they didn't really get any advancement there. But, um, you know, I think the Erickson for sure. And even the Sundquist injuries, not great timing. I will be going to practice a little bit later today to find out. But uh, let's start with you, Judd. How detrimental or at least the Eck injury is it going to be to this team yeah. moving forward? Um, On a scale of 1 to 10, if he broke his foot, it's an 11. Like Sunquist. Oh, so go, going back to, to Judd's hockey show, Jess, that, that mm-hmm. we've t- talked about this for weeks on, because I think we started to try and break down the probable playoff lines because you love lines <laughs> and in pairings. And look, I said, somebody's going to get hurt. So like Sunquist, that's not ideal. I, I mm-hmm. like how he's played, but Nyquist, assuming he's uh, coming back along with Kaprizov can replace him. Right. But here, but here's my question for both of you guys. If Erickson Eck is hurt, and can't play in the first round who are the centers yeah literally are you gonna gonna recall rossi or rossi as he likes to be called like what who who plays center like this guy is one he's instrumental like he does everything and and he's brodinish in i don't think he's as good a player as brodine but i think brodine and erickson act do a ton of stuff we don't appreciate like we're like well if he's not scoring well no he oh when he's not scoring, he's still killing penalties. Net front presence on the power play, which, by the way, on the power play, so on on the power play after Eck got hurt, um, Goudreau replaced him, and Goudreau can't do can't be net front presence. So mm-hmm. they flipped that. But Eric Zanek is damn good. Like that's a tough job, and you got and you get beat up, and you got to tip pucks. So my question back to both of you is: 
What do they do at center here if he's hurt? Kirsten, take it away first. I'm spiraling right now. Like, you know how I feel about Jewel Erickson Eck. He is just, I've, I love that guy. That's literally the most I can say. This finding out he was injured last night when I was just trying to enjoy college hockey was as bad of a day as when Tyson Jost got put on waivers. That's how serious <laughs> this is. So I'm just, that sounds like bad. a new problem, I don't, Kirsten, not a wild problem. <laughs> I just, I don't know who's going to play center. That's a whole other can of worms. And just, this is not a good day. I'm straight up not having a good time right now. I, we, you've seen me do this multiple times this season. Like wild aren't going to make the playoffs now that Kirill's out wild, blah, blah, blah. This is really bad. Like the mm -hmm. alarm is sounded and Judd brings up a good point. Who is going to play center now? Like, and I also love Judd that you said like Brodeen and Eck, they do so many things that we don't notice that we don't appreciate. Like we're, we're just not in a good spot without Jewel in that lineup. I think we're really going to see a lot of cracks that the wild do have that they're not going to have time to figure out. I mean, Jed, you alluded yeah. to it. Jewel Erickson is doing all the right things on that Johansson and Boldy line. He is crucial to them. He has yeah. that net front presence. He's able to tip it in when Boldy's fire of a shot doesn't get through and, and he's right there and he's screening the goalie and he's doing all the right things because Johansson and Boldy aren't those type of players. There aren't many who replaces Sam Steele. You obviously have a centerman there that can hop in, but again, he doesn't have the Jewel Erickson Eck presence. He doesn't have the mean mug, uh, duh face that just pisses opponents off. And that's the right. other thing that he brings. So that one, absolutely terrible. It is unfortunate for Sunquist, but you're right, Judd and, and Kirsten. It opens up a spot that was needed anyway for Nyquist mm -hmm. to come back and for Kaprizov. So unfortunately, it looked like Sunquist might have been the odd man out either way. So this injury, not knowing how serious that might be, we don't even really know what it was. It's just undisclosed at this point. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Erickson Eck, you pray that good news comes today from practice or even tomorrow ahead of the St. Louis game again, recording this on a Friday. So more will be known, but he's irreplaceable at this point. I mean, truly he is because he's exactly the type of player you need coming in to the playoffs. Let's talk a little bit, you guys, about Kaprizov and Nyquist. How excited are we for the Gustav Nyquist uh, experiment to begin? Sounds like against the St. Louis Blues on Saturday. I'm very excited. And also Jesse, just one quick follow-up on our previous discussion. Um, I'm going to blame you. If there's not good news about Jewel Erickson, you're like the weatherman, like you have no control over it, but you're the one bringing the, the bad news. So therefore <laughs> like I'm blaming you. This is also, true. If the wild need a punchable face in the lineup, they can borrow mine. I'm willing <laughs> to step in and replace Jewel Erickson X punchable face. I think we're on par. So those are my two quick things. Um, also very excited about Nyquist. If he is everything that people have been saying while he's been out. I'm very, very excited to see what he's going to bring in to this wild lineup at truly the perfect time come playoffs. Um, Bill Guerin obviously had an, a vision when he picked him up before the trade deadline. So very excited for that. And also just Kirill coming back. That's going to be huge. I just, my only concern is I hope that the wild are able to continue the momentum that they had more so Matt Boldy than anyone. So those are my quick takeaways. Deadly. Nyquist, I am, I'm curious, but I'm tempered. He, he hasn't played in a long time. So like, mm -hmm. I don't know what to expect. I think that to expect him to like step back in and be uh, Gustav Nyquist in, in his prime is probably a huge ask. That doesn't mean he can't contribute, but I'm sort of tempered there because I mean, when, you know, going back to, I think it was uh, January when he was with the Blue Jackets and got hurt, they said mm -hmm. his season is done. And then they're like, oh no, hold on a second here. It's not. <laughs> So I'm, I am, I am cautiously optimistic that he can contribute. And if he does, that's awesome. On Kaprizov, I, you know, seeing him skate the, the stuff that you and a bunch of folks, Jesse tweeted out from practice, he looks surprisingly good. He looks so surprisingly good. good. And he is such a tough SOB. Um, I'm sure he will not be at 100% until going back into training camp. But again, a lot of guys aren't. And and the, the thing is, like the Erickson Eck injury is a real problem. I get that. But the playoffs are a war of attrition. So like guys are going to get hurt. It just happens. Bless you. Thank you. I <laughs> muted myself to avoid because I have a very girly sneeze. <laughs> That's oh, see, now you you buried it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I know. Uh -huh. I know. So, so the thing about playoffs, and we see it every year, is at some point in time, guys get hurt and guys have to step up uh on your point about Steele going to center 
Do you think that Steele goes to center on the Johansson Boldy line, or do you think Dean promotes Goudreau? Because that's a son. I, I mean, his name should be it should be legally changed to <laughs> Freddie Evison. Okay, let's just change his maybe name. Maybe a hyphen it. Maybe it's Freddie Goudreau Evison. Oh, Freddie Evison yeah, that's Goudreau. Fine. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but do they promote him to that line? And then if Steele plays center, he goes to what amounts to the third line. I mean, I I think so. They tried that though immediately. That was, I think, their first stab at that line was yeah. before they moved Eck. And I think that's because again, they need that physical presence. I'm gonna say something that sounds a little crazy. It just came to me, but I'm just gonna blurt it out. Ryan Hartman. Why not put maybe Ryan Hartman there? Because he has that grittiness. Remove him from Kaprizov and Zuccarello because it's not necessary. I mean, it's not bad right now, certainly. I know they love it. I know we love that line and we don't want to mess with it, but I feel like, again, you could input a few different people. Maybe you put Sam Steele back there. Maybe you put Freddie Goudreau there. I don't know. I just think that line with Boldy and Johansson needs something more. It needs somebody tougher. And I, I Hartman's the only player, aside from Jules Eriksson Eck, in my mind that I'm comfortable slotting there, I think. So I'm going to, I said it, I'm out there. I'm putting it out there. We'll see. Uh, hashtag line heathens. We'll find out. But maybe just once, try it. You have a couple games in the regular season. Uh, give it a, give it a whirl. One other question for both of you, Matt Zuccarello. I mean, let's just say it. He's been less than impressive without Kirill Kaprizov. He's been struggling. Do you think his problems that he's had are going to be fixed once Kirill comes back? Or do you think maybe you'll have to eventually look to maybe take him off that spot and fill it with somebody else? Judd, you called him the bad employee the other day on Judd's hockey show. So why don't you, uh, enlighten us yeah. on your thought of I Matt mean, Zuccarello? Kristen she's exactly right like he has been he scored so when uh, Kaprizov got hurt I immediately said he's got to shoot more now like you've got to stop passing dude you can score goals it, it's allowed it's in your contract and he scored uh, goals in the first two games that Kaprizov missed and then he has not scored since Kirsten's exactly right um this is such an interesting question because Kirsten I mean you're you're being kind he has not been impressive he's been uh, a ghost at times like it's unbelievable and that line, well, I know that on the line charts that the team gives out before games now, that line without Kaprizov has been demoted to the second line. But all of that being said, if you take him off that line, if he's not playing well with Kirill, one is, is that going to cause problems with Kaprizov? But two is this, like for all we talk about what the adjustments might be, you guys, Dean doesn't really like to change lines much. Like if something's like if something is it has worked, Dean's gonna let that sucker ride. Uh, his adjustments are not quick, so I, you know what, I've thought about this. I would be very surprised if Zuccarello and Kaprizov are broken up unless Zuccarello like got hurt. Yeah, I'd be. That's surprised. true. That's true. You guys, we got to take one quick break. When we come back, we're gonna continue to dive into the Minnesota Wild current. And then I want to look ahead to the future a little bit, too. Look at the playoffs. Look at the Wild in 2025. One quick break. We'll be right back. What's going on? We're back. Jesse Pierce, Kirsten Kroll, Judd Zolged. And I forgot to mention producer Fred in the house today. It's been like eight weeks. Welcome, Fred. We're happy to have you here uh, managing us. It takes a lot, but I'm glad I'm here. Thank you. That's all you'll hear from him for the next eight weeks. So thank you, Fred. Round of applause. Please insert that. Glad to have you. (laughs) It's a nice Uh, room, Scott. (laughs) Very nice room. I like the wood paneling. Right? He's he's fancy. He's got that St. Louis car or uh, yeah, Cardinals hat on, I see. Just not showing the floor, all the kids' toys and everything. That's okay. It happens. I had to have grandma come get the other small child that was on my floor out of here. So that was fun. Uh, you guys, I want to continue our discussion. We were talking about Kaprizov. We were talking about lines because people love lines. You guys are all insane. Um, you know, I want to, with these injuries, again, that we're recording on a Friday, don't know how serious and severe they are. How important is that number one in the Central Division? And is it even possible right now, given the injuries to Jewel Eriksson and possibly Oscar Sundquist um, and knowing Kaprizov? will not be back for a little bit yet still until the end of the regular season. Judd, what do you think? Oh boy. Um, so if Eck is hurt, my opinion changes greatly. Unlike this entire thing. Um, 
I don't know how far, if he's not going to be playing in the playoffs or he's go, going to miss, let's say, um, the first two rounds. I don't know how far this team can go. But let's just say, let's assume that the news is good, okay? Uh, I think winning the division is incredibly important. Uh, my whole thing, though, is you want to avoid the abs. So the next best case is the abs bypass you and Dallas, and and the Stars did I, I think both teams, right? The abs oh, and yeah. stars won on uh Thursday night. Best case is uh, the abs pass you and Dallas and you finish second and get home ice against Dallas. Jake Ottinger is really damn good, but I've seen him play more of late and I think he's getting tired. So I, I'm, gotta be. yeah, I'm curious about that. Dallas as a whole doesn't really scare me. Like if you can't beat Dallas, then you just don't again, unfortunately deserve to advance. Colorado's a real, I mean, that's a different ball game with McKinnon. And if uh, my car's back and uh, uh, Byram's playing great right now. So that's a different ball game. Um, but this is why the Thursday night performance in Pittsburgh disappointed me so much. Mm -hmm. Like all we heard was, including from my friends at Pally's, uh, all we heard was, you know, the why, you know, Pittsburgh is desperate. Pittsburgh is it's like, so's the wild. You can win the division. Like what more desperation? Like you shouldn't be facing playoff elimination to play really, really well for an entire game. So that really disappointed me and then th there was the report that they called a closed door meeting with four games left in the season to say we got to button this thing down um on on my show i melted down like i'm like four <laughs> games left and you're calling a closed door meeting to say you've got a you what you need to remind your team that you're yeah. still playing for and, something and to be clear the vegas back-to-backs the saturday game i felt they didn't really i felt they tried to play too cute and so i didn't love that but i didn't hate that game and monday i thought was a hell of a game I mean, you lost, as Dean said, in a stupid shootout. Um, like, that's not – it's a tough loss. The late goal was bad. The prevent defense in the third period last week against the Avs and then that Golden Knights game bugs me. Like, like Pittsburgh did the same thing Thursday night against the Wild. You know, don't go into this shell. I just hate the shell. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't play a smart defensive style. But – yeah, I was I'm I was really taken aback by by the fact that the Wild, knowing you know the first place was on the line, didn't play bet better because obviously first place is the ideal. Like then you get what Seattle probably. You should certainly beat the Kraken. You get home ice there. Um, so yeah, I I think it's important, very important. I think it's important in the sense on a personal note, it works better for my schedule. So I want to see that. Um, but no, I, I agree with everything Judd said. Um, I would love to play <laughs> Seattle in the first round. I think they, they, at the beginning, as we talked about, they were, no one knew, no one had them figured out because they were outperforming everyone's expectations at this point in the season. Um, Seattle doesn't, I very beatable team. Very, if the Wild faced off against them, we would for sure be in the second round, even if Eck is, fingers crossed, out with a serious injury that I'm fingers crossed that he's okay. I worded that really poorly. Um, but also, too, the abs didn't scare me as much in that one game where we saw how well the Wild played against mm -hmm to them but we also have seen the wild fall off since that game um i can't tell you why monday night's game against vegas i also was really impressed with but if i now at this point i am nervous to face colorado because the wild they dropped off after their game against them most recently so uh i think the top seating is important at this point as well because otherwise if you're ending up facing one of the other teams we discussed i don't know i just don't know especially pending injuries not feeling great to quote good friend of the pod, good friend of my Marc Andre Fleury, another banner. It good. It I can't. That's my French American accent that he has. Uh, another banner. Like he joked that if he wants to win another banner, he's like it's fun to win. So certainly going for number one, oh. and it definitely seems like that's a priority. Did you guys like the accent? It could another no. banner. Another. It doesn't. Another banner. It, it sounds like you whispering. Another, because <laughs> he does whisper. I have yeah, to get so close yeah, with does. my mic when he talks. He's very quiet. He's the best uh, when when he swears. I like when he swears because he immediately apologizes. He's such a nice guy. That, that's a uh, bunch of S. Oh, sorry. Can I say that? Um, no, he, I mean, it's a good point because it would be nice to get another division championship banner up there next to the retired fans banner and stuff like that. Right. You know, like and they've got one. 
They've, they, they've got one, right? They got one. So Pretty just soon they're going to start calling us Nashville if we keep up with all these banners. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Kirsten. Yeah. Yes. Amen. I mean, I I agree with you guys. Colorado, you want to avoid. You had asked me. I mean, but you have to go through every team. I would just rather see Colorado in the second round versus the first. I mm-hmm. also wonder my next question posing to you guys. And, and truthfully, I know Dallas doesn't scare either of you nearly as much. Dallas worries me. Jason Robertson is also the real deal. I think you're right. I think they have ridden Jake Ottinger into the ground, unfortunately, because he has played absolutely tremendous for them. Um, I just feel like things are clicking the right way for Dallas. That They make me a little worried, just a little bit. Um, you know, not as much as Colorado would, but it certainly wouldn't be a cakewalk. And granted, in the playoffs, nothing should be a cakewalk, right? Unless you're the Columbus Blues Jackets taking down the Toronto Maple Leafs in a four-game sweep. But it'll be interesting. I mean, I think they have to go for it. Or my next question do you have that I have to you guys, given the fact that you did lose such an integral part and piece of your team, again, we don't know for how long, in Jewel Eric's neck, it was kind of a reminder that, oh, yeah, you play these games, but the risk of injury ahead of the playoffs when they're right there is so high. Do you think, and I'm going to ask Dean this, so we'll have an official answer on Twitter later, but do you think this changes his approach as far as resting guys? Because just the other day he told us, nope, we're not resting, you know, with the exception of Nyquist and Kaprizov, who will not play in both games of a back-to-back. Uh, everybody else is still going to play because they're still fighting for that. But again, Eric's next injury is a reminder that shit playoffs are coming. We need our guys healthy. Do you think this changes his approach, Judd? Well, I think that, I think the, the question would probably go uh, to Dean and bill, right? Like bill w- would have, cause if bill comes downstairs and says, we are going to take guys out, but no, I don't think it will. I think that they'll still play guys. Um, like there's still points to pursue here. Mm-hmm. Um, Eck getting hurt is really too bad. And it's the headline off that game. But I mean, the way that they played in the first period was disturbing to me. And so, no, I, I think that they play their guys through and, and cause there's still chance to get points here. There's still a chance if things go, go right. And their schedule is a little bit di- difficult, not super difficult uh, to win the division. So I would be very surprised if we get uh maintenance days for guys, uh, especially with Kaprizov out. Cause like your bubble wrapping your most important, uh, asset then mm-hmm. um i don't think that they would take guys out unless they, they were legit banged up and hurt um and i think right now there's guys who are banged up but i don't think there's guys who are hurt speaking of guys yeah, and- that are hurt and banged up and taking them out judd i forgot you have a very important exit time at 9 40 the conversation's just been so good oh I love we're it. just are going you- here Absolutely. so i one final question before i let you go sure how far in the playoffs will the minnesota wild get you go to practice today you file a story on Erickson Eck, and I will tell you that. Because, I mean, it's, it's seriously, his health is going to – if he's out, again, you can't replace him. Mm-hmm. Like, say, like, like I didn't even consider Steele because I don't – like, he's fine to plug in. Uh, but I didn't even – You really have cons- to. No, I know. But, I mean, it's like, oh. Like, as, among the guys they could not afford to lose going into the playoffs, okay? Brodeen, for sure. Erickson Eck. Spurgeon, you know, I mean, Kirill's out, so I won't include him because he, he's atop that list if he's not hurt already. But like that, it's a small list of guys you absolutely have to have. And if he if he's not in and they play Dallas in the first round, it's going to impact things like for sure. I, I don't know. I pick them then. Dallas doesn't scare mm-hmm. me, but they but but they scare me a heck of a lot more without a guy who who is your I mean I don't think it's even close right he is easily your best overall center yeah and Dallas has a ton of really good centers like they yep. crush the faceoffs every time they face well Judd good as point. always thank you thank you so much for joining us you can check out Judd's hockey show each and every week yours truly on Wednesdays but the rest of the time is good as well and yeah. all the other Vikings content twins content um and all your good stuff over at score north Judd you're the best thank you man thank you have, have fun in Tampa, Kirsten. Thank you. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye. We're back. Not at all having internet issues or just freezing and doing stuff like that. What are we talking about, guys? Nice. Worked clean, though, eh? We're happy you're back. That's Thank all. You.
Thank you. I'm happy I'm back. I'm happy to be back. Kirsten, let's wrap up this week's episode looking at the playoffs, continuing that playoff discussion. Uh, Judd brings up a good point, and I think we can both agree that it is dependent on Jules Eric's neck and how injured he is, how long he's out, what that means for the playoffs. But we posed this in our up for debate. Do you think the Minnesota Wild get bounced in the first round? Do you think that they lose in the second? Or do you think they make it to the Western Conference Finals? A lot of people came for me because I didn't include the Stanley Cup as an option because one, I only get three choices for my setup here. Two, really? Like, really? <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. Really? Uh, that's what I have to say about that. Kirsten, what did you, what's your selection of those three options? Uh, Jewel Eric's neck injury outside. I just, I still am very unhappy hearing Jewel Erickson neck injury. Does a little piece um, of you die every time you say it? Yes, it does. Like I'm dead inside today. Not only because I'm very tired, not only because people are slandering Adam Fantilli online, but because now Jewel Erickson neck, like I'm just, I'd have a lot and of Tyson thoughts. Tyson Trost is no longer with the team. Yeah, that too. Thanks for bringing that up again, Jesse. Um, Oh, what I forgot even what the question was, but now I remembered. Um, if Jewel is out, first round bounce. First round bounce of Jewel's out. If Jewel is healthy, we're making it to that second round. Now, after that second round, I don't know. Okay. Fred, let's draw you in here, man. What do you think? You're um, a guy that covered this team through many first round bounces as well. Uh, so. Yes, I have. <laughs> I, it's a really interesting thing because the team was really gelling with Kirill out. Um, and they were actually stepping up for some of the big heavy hitters in the league and getting some wins and points and everything. I, the, pr the problem is, to me, the most important players on this team are Boldy and Eck. You know, mm -hmm. And if one of those falls, you're going to be, it could be a four game sweep. Ooh, that's... I mean, that's All that's right. the wild way in the last five years. That's the wild way. So we'll see. Wild fans will not games. like that. But hey, it's let's reality. Add, let's add Taylor Swift's number one fan, Jonas Brodeen, into that a trio of players that are the Minnesota Wild. Let's add him in there. Yeah, I'd agree. Fred hated that I said that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. You need a defenseman. Yes, you do. So that's your, that's, that's fair. Um, I think they make it to the second round regardless. I agree. Jules Eriksson being out again, recording this on a Friday. So we'll know more. We'll put an asterisk by it. But even if Jules Eriksson Eck is out, I think these guys have shown throughout this season in particular, how much they can step up with top players out. Kirill Kaprizov, namely, right? And maybe Gustav Nyquist, is an answer. I am excited personally to see Gustav. He, I mean, is a 40 point getter in seasons past last year. I mean, he hasn't played since January 25th. No question that that is a challenge. Yes, that's a problem for the physical point. And he is certainly like half the size of Jewel Eriksson, but maybe Nyquist really helps. And I think second round is attainable. I think I'm done with being just satisfied at the first round. If they don't make the second round, I'm going to do something drastic. I don't know what it is yet. Maybe it's another mullet. Maybe it's Bardown Beauty's tattoo. I don't know. But if they don't make the second round this year, I'm going to be just, just not a, not a happy camper. I'm going to feel like Kirsten does about the Eck injury and Tyson Joe's getting traded and and all that stuff. Can there I ask this again. question? Can I ask this question? Mm -hmm. In reality, though, is this team playing with house money because they shouldn't be here with the salary cap situation that they're in? I is mean, this actually, it's, like, we should take a step back and be like, we're, we're actually, this is incredible. We shouldn't be here. Yeah, but that's why I like it. Like, last year, I think they thought they should be there, right? And they should have been. And then they blow it. You know, they they absolutely blow it. And you look at this year, and this team shouldn't be here, so they've got to be feeling themselves because they're doing something right, right? And again, that's a credit. And I want to get into this more in next week's episode, you guys, because I did want to discuss it today, but we just ran out of time. Like, I do want to look at the future of this team a little bit, regardless of what happens at the end of this year, because I think there's some major, major things that need to be considered a caprice off extension. You have to think of all of these different things in order to set up the squad for a good run in the future. Um, as for right now, in the current present, they they need to make the second round. They need to, because you, know you're, you're, you need to start turning too. the corner. Yeah, Kirsten. I thought of something too. The Wild, you bring up the Kaprizov extension. 
If the wild want to keep Caprice off, they're going to need to get out of the first round. He is not here to mess around. He's a superstar. He wants a Stanley cup. You can't even get out of the first round. What are you incentivizing him with to stay in Minnesota? So, I mean, yes, just from the fan perspective, team perspective, get out of that first round, but to keep your superstar players happy, you, there's no question about it. You need to get out. Or get him another Russian. One of those two, because Matt Zuccarello is not the answer to keep Kirill Kaprizov happy, I think. Uh, it, it's part of it, because I think Kaprizov needs a buddy like that. And Matt Zuccarello is good for him, but he's not great for the rest of the team. He's kind of on the tail end of his career here. So you need another Russian, I think, moving forward. So yes, get out of the sec- first round for Jesse. Get out of the first round for Kaprizov. Get out of it for just to make Kirsten happy a little bit, right? You know, probably. I and, need to smile. Fred. Yeah. I deserve to smile after yeah. everything that has happened. Does, it, does she sound like a parent lately? I mean, like, <laughs> that's, that's the things that are coming out of her Fred mouth. Fred and I live this every day. And I should be saying on a daily basis. <laughs> just I think I snapped, snapped. I snapped a long time ago, and now you guys are just dealing with the repercussions. Wow. Okay. Welcome to the yes. club. We're all dead inside here. We're all dead inside hey. here. Uh, I want to we... say I'm happy to be here, but I'm not happy. So. <laughs> Us dead inside folks are the Bar Down Beauties <laughs> podcast, uh, bringing you new episodes each and every week. We do have our next live show at Harbor Bar in Stillwater coming up this Friday, the 14th. Look forward to seeing you guys out there. TBD on time. I believe it'll be 6 p.m., but we will confirm that. Uh, again, Harbor Bar, a great spot. We'll be looking ahead at the Minnesota Wild as they ready into the playoffs. You likely won't even know position until later Friday night. Uh, because things are so tight in the in the West and in the Central as they usually are. So shout out to Greenbelt for allowing us another live show at Harbor Bar. Again, that's on Friday. Shout out to Soda Stick. Uh, as always, great merch. You know it. I don't need to spiel you with it. Use code Bardom Beauties at checkout for 15% off. Shout out to Jim Beam. Always a good thing to cheers. A little, little liquor in your drink. I'm sure Kirsten will be drinking some of that because she's also dead inside. That's what dead inside people do is they drink Jim Beam. So cheers to that. That should be their new slogan. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll find out. And also Royal Credit Union. Less fee, more free. You guys are awesome. Appreciate you each and every week for checking us out. Follow along on all of our socials. And uh, you know what? Hey. Go Ghosts! This podcast is made possible due to listeners like you. Thank you.